Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is Centurion 71. It's a tier 9 British medium tank. It's located on the north spawn of Lakeville under the command of Fluffy Little Kitten. Okay, well, he's got the uh, 105mm gun, if I'm not mistaken, which is the L7A1. And he's capable of doing 390 alpha, penetrating 268mm with standard APCR. And he's got heat rounds as well, which will do 480, but only penetrate 210. In fact, they're Hesh rounds. Yep, there you go. Hesh. Very nice indeed. Now, Centurion 71 is an expanded and upgraded version of the Centurion. It's got a bigger hull. So, uh, larger on the inside, on the cabin, for the crew, and he's bounced his first round from an Indian Panzer. Hello, Mr. Indian Panzer. Do you want to come out and play? He's expecting him to poke up behind the bush at the moment, the tree, but he doesn't want to come out. I think he saw a centurion and he thought, ah, no, this is going to be difficult. Because hull down, one of these is very difficult to kill. 10 degrees of gun depression and a very solid turret. I mean, the hull's not bad either, but uh, yes, it's a very solid turret. And we've just spotted the enemy arty at the back and he's got a tank destroyer with him as protection. T28 prototype. Now, Fluffy's trying to move into a position where he can start laying down fire on those enemy tanks using his 10 degrees. But at the moment, the ground's not cooperating, and this is notorious in Lakeville because the valley is very, very soggy. It doesn't really show you that very well, but you can feel it when you're trying to move about. So instead, he's decided to side scrape instead and see if he can get shots that way. Nice shot, shot went through the Indian Panzer's turret. You know, the Indian Panzer is signed by Porsche to be a a contender for the Indian tank contract. They didn't get it in the end. It went to uh, an export version made by Vickers. The VJ Armour, I think it was, if I remember correctly. Okay. Oh, ouch. That was the 430, yeah. A 122 millimeter round. Yep, T28 doesn't have much armor and therefore he was easily able to punch through. Got to be careful of that 430 because yes, he does have the ability to punch through with standard ammo. But that time round, he didn't get it right. That's better. Got his first kill. And the Indian Panzer's only got a 90mm gun, but it's a very good gun. But he can only do 330. Well, he's expecting the Indian Panzer to come back out again. And he does. And he gets the shot, but it's a low roll on this occasion. Ouch. Indian Panzer finally reverts to using HE because nothing else seems to be working. And the 430 finds another AP round of this which bounces. Well, what we can say about the Centurion 71 is it does have an excellent top gun. The 105, obviously, because it can fire Hesh. That's better. You just need to adjust to get the hull down position and then get the gun to bear on the 430. And the Indian Panzer still can't get anything using AP, decided to switch back to AP, thought that uh, he might be able to get something. And now, obviously, with the ST1s pushed forward, the, the Indian Panzer will definitely try to fire AP at him. Of course, the, the one of the best things about this 105mm gun is the Hesh ammunition, which does tend to pen and do a lot of damage. Much more than the uh, standard AP does, or standard APCR, I should say. It's got a very strong turret. Excellent gun depression. 
fairly good acceleration and agility as well and the view range is not bad 410 meters which is bigger than quite a few medium tanks the bad thing is, is that the reload time isn't that great standard reload is 10.74 but oh that object 430 stuck around just to try and put one in but he's gonna die the next shot say goodnight gracie and uh, yeah it uh, doesn't have great dpm because the standard is 10.74 the actual we've got here from bluffy is 8.48 and that kind of lets it down the dpm puts one into the indian panzer but he did get a hit on us on the amorak so we had to fix that straight away but the indian panzer goes and we're now only three enemies left Come on, Bluffy puts one into the rear of the Yag Tiger, gets a high roll for 395. Can he get another shot in? Yes. Side of the casement, 394. That reload's letting him down again. Go for it again. Tries to go for the roof. Now, that was a mistake there by Bluffy, but he luckily bounced the round that came from the Yag Tiger. Now, put one into the Pajetto. Oh! 443, that's a high roll. Get another one if you can. Now. Yes, and he gets the kill shot that wins the game. What bloody little kitten. Here's the end of battle stats and that was an ace tanker for fluffy little kitten in the Centurion Mark 7-1. He's had an ace tanker in this one before because he didn't get the scrolls underneath, and we know that. As well as a shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. A fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. And he also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits, and that's exactly what he got. He got the high caliber in that game as well for doing the most damage, as well as a steel wall for blocking the most damage. And you could see from the marks on the turret that the enemy was trying to get him and just kept bouncing off that beautiful turret, which is so difficult to pen. His win eight from that game was 9,009, which is super unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score and see where he is. Well, he got the high caliber 4,659 hit points. The nearest player to him was that Progetto, the one he killed right at the end to win the game. 3,170 hit points of damage went to him. And the third highest damage went to the Char Fu 204 on his own team with 2,799. When it came to kills, he had the highest number with three. Two kills went to the Char Fu 204, the Leopard Prototype, the Charioteer, the ISU 152K, and only one member of the enemy team managed to get more than one kill, and that was the Progetto 46. When it came to base XP, yep, he's the only one to get over a thousand. He got 1,303, which means he's got the top in all three columns. 866 went to the Char Fu 204, and the same amount went to the Leopard Prototype. Identical amounts. Uh, let's have a look at detail. He fired 17 shots, got 14 direct hits on the enemy and 13 penetrations. Damage of 4,659 hit points, of which 1,150 were at more than 300 meters. He received 13 hits from the enemy, only two of which actually penetrated. And yeah, the Object 430 was the one who got both of those. 10 non-penetrations on one hit by way of splash. 3,260 hit points of damage blocked by armor. He spotted six enemy vehicles, damaged five of the enemy, killed three. And he also got 941 hit points of spotting assist in that one. 69,759 credits for the game. And after repair, ammunition, respawn, and consumables, he actually came away with 22,591 credits profit. Now, he didn't actually use that much in the way of premium ammo. In fact, I don't think he used it at all, which is rather unusual for Fluffy because we normally say that he's welded his uh, finger to the Tuki. But um, uh, in this occasion, he actually did rather well because he was firing the APCR and it worked and he got some great results. 25 bonds. 1,954 XP times 5 on this occasion, 9,772 experience points altogether. He says, for the crown. Well, he certainly did do a good job in this game. Let's have a look at the armor profile for this tank. Now, the turret, I said, is absolutely brilliant. Look at this armor. Uh, 254 impacted armor. You're getting 254. It's flat-sided at that particular point, but it's very difficult to penetrate that mantlet either. Uh, 236 there. 
270 yeah you're looking at huge values to try and get through very very difficult and you can see the upper plate is incredibly well angled even that plate just where the driver is is well angled 120 millimeters coming out of the 183 most of the time you never see any of this simply because it's hull down and then in a hull down position where you're looking at it like this um, it's impossible to get a shot that will actually penetrate the turret. So it's almost like don't even bother because about the only place you can hit is on the, uh, the, the cupola. And even then it doesn't show most of the time simply because the turret is looking down on you and the cupola is hidden. But anyway, you can see the lower plate is 76.2 millimeters coming out of 124 because it's nicely angled. Upper plate, I mentioned that coming out in 196. The side's got uh, spaced armor because obviously you've got a shield over the bogies. So six millimeters of that and 50.8 of the actual side of the vehicle. So coming out about 83 or 140. It just depends on where you're actually looking on uh, the vehicle to uh, how much it is. But if you get the sides here, you can see it's only 50.8. So if you can get the sides of a Centurion 7.5, you should be able to pen it. Uh, but the difficulty is actually getting a Centurion 71 to come out of a hold down position and then to punt that round into him. I suppose the best way to do that would be to actually try and get alongside him, you know, charge him, get alongside him and then pump those rounds in. But remember to pump them in over the uh, the shield, over the, uh, um, the wheels, because otherwise you're not going to get it through or it's not going to be easy. Uh, at the rear, again, armor very light, 31.8 at the actual rear, coming out 33. Rear of the turret, 88.9, coming out to 89. So there's the armor, very tough from the front, this thing, because it's built for hull down positions, and it's very effective at that. In fact, uh, many armies around the world who've actually used the Centurion 7-1 have used it to really good effect by being in hull down positions, popping up, taking a shot and popping back down again before the enemy can do anything about it. Work for the Israelis. Anyway, let's have a look at the uh, the modules. As you can see, there's an Amarak up front right next door to the driver. Most of the time, that's not going to be visible to the enemy if you're in a hull down position. Driver's on the left hand side of the vehicle, obviously because it's a British tank, we drive on the left, not on the right. Amarak right next door to him, which is the long-term store. Then there's the deep store, which is actually just underneath the bar turret basket there. Uh, the loader is on the right-hand side, gunner on the left-hand side, and TC behind him, standard configuration. Radio behind the uh, TC in the bustle. At the back of the vehicle, it's an unusual configuration because we've got fuel tanks all around the place. The actual engine's in the center, as you'd expect. We've got fuel tanks either side of the engine and one right at the very back, just above the transmission. So, yes, um, that's not a normal configuration, but it does sort of like increase the chances. If you pump around into the rear of this vehicle, you're either going to get the engine or a fuel tank, one of the two. Uh, to set the thing alight if you can get the size of the vehicle but most people don't anyway so there you go there's the modules on the centurion 71 so a great grain from fluffy little kitten congratulations ace high caliber steel wall not bad in fact actually played this tank to its best abilities which is of course to go hull down he, he just couldn't get over that little rise to, because the ground's so slippery on that that area to the to the right of the pass but uh, by using the pass itself if the others aren't bothered then yes you can use that little spot the only thing you've got to worry about really is that if you do use that spot RT is going to focus on you and certainly I would if I was in an RT fighting against the tank that was hull down in that position I'd be laying rounds down as fast as I could into that hull down tank because obviously that's the one who you can't who your teammates can't hit or at least can't do anything about but if you can slow down the rate of fire of a tank that's hull down uh, you give your teammates a chance to do something about him but uh, if you can't um uh, do anything about him then obviously sooner or later he's going to uh, take out your teammates and then he's going to come after you but great game by uh, fluffy i uh, hope you enjoyed it if you did please give the video a like do subscribe to our channel leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm and of course please do let other people know at the moment because of the war in ukraine we are giving all the proceeds from this channel to the red cross ukraine appeals so the more of our videos you watch 
the more help you are sending to the refugees. So please do watch as many as you can. And we are posting proof that the money has been sent and everything on the uh, What Arty Noobs Facebook page and the What Noobs one as well. Thanks for watching.